Howdy folks and welcome to another Automation Anywhere technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to look at the ability to work against repeating fields in a web page. So repeating fields are areas of the web page which repeat and we want to process each individual section of the web page individually. Now I'm going to illustrate this through some simple HTML. So here's an HTML which uh, is rendered over here. It shows three lines, or what appears to be three lines, from my pizza order. I want pepperoni on the full, mushroom on the full, and anchovies on the half. Mmm, anchovies. No, not really. But okay, anchovies on the half. Here's what the HTML looks like. Now again, this is illustrative. Obviously, we could jazz up this page with colors and borders and images, but somewhere in the page there would be the data of what I'm ordering on my pizza. Now, on my pizza, I've only got three items, but you could imagine I've just got one item or I could have ten items. I could have lots and lots of different types of items. So what I want to do is have Automation Anywhere bring up this page, identify how many items I've got on the, uh, on the order, and for each item, extract it and do something with it. So that's the underlying puzzle. So this is not Excel data, this is not XML data, this is a web page where the web page contains repeating content. So this is what the web page looks like from the web page programmer's perspective. So now let's flip over and look at Automation Anywhere and see how we can start parsing that kind of data. So here's the solution and I'm going to take you through it step by step and then we'll see it run and then we'll talk about it some more. So the first thing we do is we open the target web page. Well, that's nothing more than open a browser and this is my target web page. Okay, nothing special there. Now we get into some interesting things. I have a loop construct. Now the loop is going to loop over each of the items that are on the web page. Now let's pause a second and look at that web page from a DOM data tree perspective. At a high level, this is what the web page looks like as understood by the browser. It's got the body of the web page. In the example, it's a, it's a div. And then the divs break down each division into its own line item for the uh, item being ordered. Pepperoni, mushrooms, anchovies. So if we want to iterate over each of the items that are ordered on my pizza, what we're really doing is we're iterating over each of the children of this division. So this child represents my pepperoni, this child represents my mushrooms, this child represents my anchovies. If there were more items, there would just be more children of this division. And this is where we use XPath. Now, the editor here is a little bit poor. I can't read that in the editor, so let me copy that and put that in a notepad. In a notepad. And we will see what we've got. So what we are iterating over here is the XPath HTML, body, div, and then the current counter in the loop. Now, the loop starts at counter number one. So what we're asking is, is there an entry that this expression evaluates to true? So HTML body, the first div, div1, that is true. Counter increments in the loop, div2, that is true. Counter increments in the loop, div3, that is true. Counter increments in the loop, there is no div4 child of, this, of, the, of the div here. So what we end up doing is terminating the loop. So we iterate over all of the children of this div, and uh, when we have no more, we end the loop. So that is how we are doing the uh, determination of, of, uh, of the loop. Now that we're going through the loop, it becomes a simple, relatively simple matter to extract from the uh, appropriate uh, element using, again, the div mechanism. So let me grab that, paste it into Notepad. And now what we're doing is we're extracting from the, the DOM tree the appropriate element. Let's see it again. So in this case, it would be body div div1 and span where the item ID 
oh, I'm sorry, where the ID of that span equals item, and that would extract pepperoni, and so on. So uh, we've got a loop here which does the job. And if we run it again, uh, the next one it extracts the coverage, uh, pizza uh, 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 item and coverage, and then at the end I log those into a file just to show that it was run. So if uh, we run this, it's 10.13 local time. If we now run this, uh, it'll bring up a browser. My hands are off the keyboard. It's bringing up a browser and now it's uh, examining the DOM tree. It's going through its steps. The reason it's so slow here, I've got debugging on. And at the end of the completion, if we bring up a tool such as log export, we shall see that at 10.13 on this date, we were able to parse out the items in the data. Now, just to demonstrate that this is working, let's go and add another item in our data. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. We shall have, uh, what do I like? I like um, pineapple. Pineapple. I'm probably spelling this wrong. And I'm going to have that on half. So I save this. I now come up to my browser, I republish my server, make sure that that's going to work. Yes, it does. Pineapple a half. Come back up here, close my browser, and let us rerun this one more time. So we run it again. It's going to bring up the browser. Oh, and the browser needs to be refreshed. I haven't figured out the cache in this yet, so let me cancel this. Let's run it again. And let's run it one more time. And now uh, we won't have a cached uh, web page object. And we'll run through four items, pepperoni, mushroom, anchovies, and pineapple. Uh, the time is 10.14. And if we look on our log, we shall see that we do indeed have pineapple. So that demonstrated that we were able to add or change data within our web page and the script correctly uh, built up the, uh, the, the, the correct number of iterations around the loop. So this was a technical illustration to illustrate the concept of being able to iterate over different parts of your web page. Uh, to me, the secret here is to be able to firmly understand how a web page looks from a DOM model perspective. Now, let me pause a second because I just realized I've got something I want to show you. I'm back. This is a tool called XPath Helper. Now, it's available on Chrome and uh, uh, it can be installed as a Chrome plugin. When it's installed as a Chrome plugin, it looks like this little Xbox up here. Now, what this tool does is if we come over here, here's my web page. Now, if I engage this tool, we can now hold the shift button down. And as I move my mouse over the web page, if you look down at the bottom of the screen, you are seeing the XPath path to the element which is selected on the screen. And these XPath paths are exactly what I use in automation anywhere. So although one can most certainly deduce the XPath path by knowing the DOM structure or using other tools to go into the DOM structure to figure out the path of your item, this takes out all the guesswork and is such a useful tool, this XPath Helper. So using XPath Helper in conjunction with Chrome, you can uh, scan, interpret, x-ray your web page to find the actual XPath query that can then be plugged in to the Automation Anywhere uh, selections for the DOM XPath selector. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that. Uh, hopefully, again, you found something useful, a nice short technical tutorial. Sometimes it's good to see other folks working. And I uh, hope you like this, and I uh, hope to make more of these videos in the future. Thanks for now, guys, and bye-bye.